Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Logic. In this video, we're going to be discussing the counterexample. The counterexample is used to, pro to prove invalidity. Now, what is proving invalidity? You remember if you have an argument, you have deductive or inductive arguments, you remember that. Now, valid is part of the deductive argument. Now, you remember, if you have a deductive argument, the first step is to check the form. Is the form valid? If the form is valid, then you want to check the premises to see if they're true, and if they're true, then you become sound. So in order to check for validity, you remember we, in previous videos, have done the circle example. For example, if you want to evaluate this argument to see if it's valid, all pit bulls are poodles, so put the pit bull in the poodle circle, all poodles are dogs, so all the poodles go in the dog circle. Every poodle goes in the dogs according to that. All dogs are poodles, so therefore the conclusion says all pit bulls are dogs. Is that true? Well, all pit bulls are now in the dog circle, so that argument is valid. Now another way to check if it's valid is to use the counterexample. Now let me show you the counterexample method. I think you're really going to like this one. Okay, now I made a mistake. I want to correct that. Counterexample method is only used to prove invalidity, not to prove that it's valid, but you can prove that it's invalid. Okay, so an argument is either valid or invalid because of the argument form. What is the form of the argument? Here's an example of the argument form. Okay, all blank are blank. All this are that. Therefore, all those are this. This is an argument form, all A or B, etc. Now, this is also an example of a valid argument form. Now, how are we going to know that? How are we going to test that? Well, if you imagine that you have, you substitute this A for cows, this term you substitute for cows, the B you substitute for mammals, the C for animals, etc. So, whatever goes here in the, in the argument that you present or somebody else presents, you could just take these terms and substitute them for something else. That's what we're going to be checking out now. For example, this argument would be all cows are mammals, all mammals are animals, therefore all cows are animals. Okay, so when you do this, when you substitute terms, it's called the substitution instance of the form. Okay, here's an example of an argument form. Now this argument form is invalid. Now, not every set of substitutions will give an argument true premises and a false conclusion, but it's always possible to find substitutions that will give this result. Okay, stay with me here. What does that mean? Let's look at this argument form. Now, if we take this argument form and we substitute these letters for these terms, so everywhere there's an A, we put fish. Everywhere there's a B, we put animals. Everywhere there's a C, we put birds we would get this argument. All fish are animals. All birds are animals. Therefore, all fish are birds. Now, let's take a closer look at this first premise. So remember, we want to get true premise and a false conclusion. All fish are animals. That is true. Look at the next one. All birds are animals. Are all birds animals? Yes, that's true. So the conclusion says, all fish are birds. Are, are all fish birds? No, that's false. Okay, so we got true premise and a false conclusion. Now remember, any deductive argument that has true premises, it would be sound if it was valid, remember? That, and that's because a valid argument, the next step, if you get a valid argument, check if the premises are true, then it would be sound. So any, a valid argument with true premises is sound. And a deductive argument with true premises, it would be sound if it was valid. So you want to get this, true premise, true premise, false conclusion, by substituting the terms. So if you can swap the terms to make an argument have true premise and a false conclusion, then you will know that the argument form is invalid. You can prove that it's invalid. And welcome to the counterexample. Once you get this down, it's just going to be dynamite in your toolbox. Now, as I've said before, this counterexample only works for deductive arguments to prove it's invalid. 
It cannot be used to prove that the argument is valid, but it can be used to prove that it's invalid. Okay, now here's some of my favorite terms to use, and you can remember them quite easily. That's animals, mammals, cats, and fish. I remember it by these rhymes, animals, mammals, and a catfish, like a cat with whiskers. So you got animals, mammals, cats, fish. Animals, mammals, cats, fish. All right, let's do it one more time to let it stick in our minds. Animals, mammals, cats, fish. Animals, mammals, cats, fish. Animals, mammals, cats, fish. And also, just so everybody's clear on what these terms mean, mammals, cats, fish are all animals. But no fish are mammals. Oh, yeah, also, the word sum in logic means at least one. So the statement, some fish are animals, means at least one fish is an animal. That's true. Now, the statement, some fish are animals, this does not imply that some fish are not animals. Okay, now it's time for a couple of practice problems. Now, it's important to do these practice problems. Get your experience. What's, what you may want to do is press pause when I say press pause. Try to answer it yourself. Take some time. Try to answer it. Then press play to see if you're correct. Okay, now another thing I want to say, remember, your goal in this practice problems is to make the premises true and the conclusion false. If you can do that, then you will prove that the argument is invalid. Okay, let's begin with a couple of practice problems. Ready? Here's your first argument form. Now, this is an invalid argument form. What you want to do is you want to substitute the terms by using these terms. So, anywhere you see an A, you want to put one of these terms there. Okay. Now, I'm going to press pause, figure it out, and press play. Three, two, one. Okay, answer is you should have got this. All cats are animals. All cats are mammals, therefore all animals are mammals. Now why is that? Well, how does this prove that it's invalid? Well, all cats are animals, that's true. Next premise. Are all cats mammals? Yes, that's true. Okay, let's look at the conclusion. All animals are mammals, is that true? Fish are animals and they're not mammals, so that's false. Now you've proven that you have true premise, true premise, and a false conclusion just by simply changing the terms around. Now, after you get down this, you'll hear an argument. You'll be able to see this in your mind and swap these terms around to prove that it's invalid that quick. And you have a mind like a trap. People think you're a genius. Let's go to the next practice problem. Here's an invalid argument form. Swap the terms to come up with an argument to prove that it's invalid. Press pause. The answer is. Three, two, one. Here's an answer that works. If you swap these terms, or these letters for these terms, you would have got this argument. This argument, let's look at premise one. You want, remember, you want true premise and a false conclusion. That proves it's invalid. Premise one, all cats are animals. Are all cats animals? Yes, that's true. Next one, all mammals are animals. Are all mammals animals? Of course that's true. You guys are smart. Next one, let's look at the conclusion. No cats are mammals. Is that true? Are no cats mammals? Nope, that's false. So now you know by simply swapping these terms out for animals, mammals, cats, fish. Animals, mammals, cats, fish. You can prove simply right away that it's invalid. Okay, now remember... If you can use the same form of the argument that someone presents and substitutes the terms to make true premise and a false conclusion, then you'll know that the argument is invalid. And there are many different argument forms. Don't get overwhelmed, but you'll learn and know all about these shortly. There's all are this, no are that, some are this, some are that, some are not this, some are not that. And there's arguments that are mixed up. And now you got a handy little method to prove that any of these uh, argument forms that the argument is presented is invalid by using the counter example. Also, you can get a lot more practice problems. Uh, find some arguments in newspapers, magazines, on television commercials, watch some politicians, write out the argument form, substitute the terms to see if it's invalid, see if you can prove it invalid. Thank you so much. See our other logic videos, post any questions, comments below, etc. Have a great day. That's all.